today I'm spilling the beans on my favorite technique for outer space galaxy. I like to do a little bit of mixed media. Let's get started. You want to start with a nice black base so you just get this on as evenly as possible. Sometimes I use a roller, sometimes I use a canvas that's already black, but for the sake of this tutorial, I had white and black paint. Really, when you think about it, you can use any combination of colors for this effect for other things, other applications. It's really up to you to experiment and play with it and see what other types of colors would make a nice psychedelic galaxy. Funny thing, the video that I did with the larger canvas didn't record, so I'm just going to do a quick one-off with the smaller 5x7 that I have. We're going to do a sponge on technique to make the nebula. I like to use natural sponges or round sponges, but really you can use beauty makeup sponges. Those work really well, especially if you're using a lot of different colors. You can use a lot of different sponges. You can get a whole bag of those for 99 cents. The problem with these sponges is they have really sharp edges, which you don't want. This is a, you're making a gas cloud, so you just pick off some of the foam and get rid of those sharp lines. I'm using some multi-purpose art paper that I have. It's good for acrylics or watercolor to mix my paint on because we're going to use this later. So make sure you have a nice clean piece of paper to put your daubs of paint on because we're going to use that to make our planet. I'm going to keep this really simple and only use a couple of colors. I'm using magenta and a straight phthalo blue. I'm just going to use them right out of the tube, not too much mixing. Just the magenta and phthalo blue and then I'm going to take a little bit of white as well. These are just regular acrylic paints, nothing fancy. And then I'm adding a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. The main colors of this nebula are going to be the blue and the magenta, and I'm using the red and the yellow as highlight or accent colors. So you start with just the plain darker color. And you can't really see it on the canvas, it looks like but these are going to be, this is going to be your nebula that's a little bit further away. So don't worry that it doesn't look like much. We're going to layer this up. So you just blot this anywhere, really, kind of all over. Then you add a little bit of white to bring up some of that color. And then you just keep layering it and layering it and layering it. Don't worry if it's starting to look like it's a bit too much. We're going to go back over all of this with some black to tone it down once we get it to where we need it to be. You can really do this with any combination of colors. This is what I love about the universe is so random. If you can think it, it exists. I love these 99 cent pack of sponges because I can use a different sponge for every color. You don't really have to wait for the different layers to dry in between. I just like to go ahead and layer them on top. The colors will mix a little and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to take this thinner edge now and get into the white and a little bit of water to make it a little thinner. So now I'm going to start deciding where I want my 
galaxies to be. The one I'm going to do here in the center is going to be looking at it as if you were looking at the, the Milky Way from the side. So basically uh, it's the whirlpool style galaxy but this one's on its side. They tend to have more stars in the center and then trail out on the ends where the arms would be. So I'm doing a straight line for the galaxy, putting a little more white in the center. It's kind of like looking at a fried egg on its side. Then I'm gonna add one pinwheel, a little looking at it also from the side, but maybe from a different angle. I'm adding a tiny, tiny amount of yellow to this white for the galaxy. That way when I throw the single stars on there and they're just the plain white, they'll stand out more. And then I'll do another one, maybe head on. I like to do these with the arms. So you do swirl one way and then you start in that same point and swirl out the other way. I'll have to set up my camera next time so you can see underneath my hands. I'm working on that. And you can do as many arms. Um, this one just has two. You can do some with three. It's easier if you have a thinner edge or a bigger canvas. <laughs> Then you just want to add a little bit of star clusters, just sort of points of interest. Not too many, just a few. So now you see I added my fried egg. Now I'm pulling a little bit of white into my paint to add some highlight, basically where your galaxies are I'm going to cast light onto the dust cloud. So you add a little bit of white into your paint to make little highlights on your dust clouds. Where that light's gonna cast. to complement the blue and the magenta just sort of stands out a little and then I'll yep, I had too much paint I'm just trying to add a little bit of highlight okay that looks like a thing it's getting there so now I'm gonna let that dry and while I'm doing that we're gonna make our planets Basically you have these blobs of paint that are left over and I never like to waste paint. So I reuse them. I just blend this all over the place. Mix it all together, make as many interesting shapes and patterns. I like to focus on the outside edge, work from the edges inward because later on we're gonna punch these out and it's easier to do them from the edge. Here's one that I had on hand from another project. I always just blot out all of my paint whenever I work on a project because you never know when you're gonna need these 
things to cut out for a mixed media. So I like to have them on hand. And you don't waste paint. I'm using an inch and a half circle punch for this particular project. Um, it's upside down, sorry. But um, I like this particular cutter because you can see underneath and you can decide where you want your planet, like what looks good to you. I think I'm gonna go with maybe the green because it will balance out with the red and the blue nicely. It'll contrast. So that's gonna be my big one, my big planet. I don't have a smaller cutter yet. I just haven't gotten one, but I have these gears and it has a small gear and a big gear and it also cuts out the center circles. So I just use those. You can also use a regular hole punch um, if you have one or just tray something and cut it out with scissors. These make nice little moons. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to take some black and a sponge and just go back through and temper this a little bit. Adding in some shadows. Now that I know where my light sources are, I can add some shadows behind and thin out some of these nebula clouds. It's a little too thick, but I needed to know where they were first. So you just blot in some black to add some shadow. I'm going to add a little black and a little water, a little watered down black to this pinwheel galaxy up here just to recede it into the background a little. I don't want it to be as close as the one in the center. So you just dab dab. I'm using the natural sponge here just to show you what that looks like. It's not too different than the ripped up beauty blender. I'm gonna thin out the outside edges of my center one and also thin this one down a little. Once you get that about where you want it, you wait for it to dry and we'll move on to the next step. Now it's time to add the stars. I like to use the toothbrush method. It gives a little bit more control, I think, than some of the others. And it's actually a little less messy. Um, I know you can use two paintbrushes and do the tapping method, but I seem to get a lot of paint all over the place when I do that. Yeah, that's just tapping, the tapping method, but I make a huge mess when I do that. So I'm gonna use a toothbrush and you just, the bristles are nice and stiff so you can use your finger and flick paint onto the canvas really quickly at high speeds and you can aim it. And you wanna make sure the majority of your stars are where your galaxies are. That's where the bigger clusters of stars are gonna be. So that's where you wanna focus your, your paint flicks. So you wanna add some water to your white and brush it a little bit to give a nice thin white. And you just flick that all over your canvas, focusing on where your galaxies are. You point the toothbrush head down actually didn't have enough paint. So you want to add a little bit of water to your white and make it a nice watery white and point
point your brush at your galaxies and just run your finger across the bristles, focusing on the higher concentration of stars. Then you can pull back a little and add a light smattering of stars all over, but you want to focus your concentration on those galaxies. This technique works really well for creating snow also. And I like to take a pen, one that doesn't work anymore, and dip it into the white paint and add closer stars. So I'll just dip it into the white and add nice points at the center of the galaxies, maybe one or two that are closer outside the nebula. I'm adding a little bit of shooting star action, comets. Now you can see how these really white single stars really stand out against that slightly yellow white that we used for the galaxy base. And you let that dry. So now we're gonna bring in our planets. I decided since this is such a small canvas, I'm only gonna do one planet with a moon in the foreground. You just use white school glue. You can glue that wherever you want. I'm a little bummed out because I covered up that galaxy, but that was the best place for that planet, so that's the way it goes sometimes. I'm gonna take my moon and just overlap a little. I think I like it there. And you put a weight on it to let it Hold it down until it dries. I like to use a clear UV sealer on these types of paintings because it really makes the blacks blacker, makes the colors pop a lot more. So I just took this outside and sprayed it. Once it's dry, I'll bring it back inside and last touch. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow to my planets. I like to do this after I do the UV sealer because in case I mess up, I won't ruin my paper planet. So you just add a little watered down black to the edge of the moon to show the shadow of that moon falling over the planet. And it's really up to you how close or how far you wanna do that drop shadow. You can use your finger to blend it out a little bit. Because it's sealed, I could wipe it up without it soaking into the paper. But once it dries, it's, it's dry. And if you wanted to give it another coat of the acrylic after you're done, just a little safeguard. I like to go a little bit darker, closer to the edge, and then blend it out as the shadow is 
further out. And there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and share and hit the bell if you want to get notified of all the new tutorials as soon as they drop.